Hello, I am Red Mage, and welcome to a Magic the Gathering video featuring the color red. In today's video, Dinosaurs and Lost Caverns of Ixalan Standard. This deck has turned out to be way better than I thought it was going to be. Let's start with the mana creatures. At one mana we have Ixali's Lore Keeper. At two mana we have Intrepid Paleontologist. Both of these cards are great. Ixali's Lore Keeper can get you a turn 2-6-6, pretty hard to beat that. Intrepid Paleontologist gets you late game value because you can cast dinosaurs from your graveyard. We have Belligerent Yearling at 2 mana, the best aggro card in the deck, as well as its Kenth Firstborn of Gishat, which provides both good stats at 2 mana and removal. Pugnacious Hammer Skull, the aforementioned 6-6 six, six, possibly on turn 2, Hulking Raptor, a 4-mana 5-3 with Ward 2. A 4-mana 5-powered creature with Ward 2 has turned out to be so much better than I thought it would be, even with just the 3 toughness. This is a creature that has been incredible against control decks and aggro decks alike, as well as what everybody assumes is the main point of playing the card, certainly the main reason I put it in this deck, the 2-mana at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Well, what do we do with that 2-mana? We can cast Bone Horde Dracosaur and or cast the cards that get exiled with Bone Horde Dracosaur. We also have two copies of Trumpeting Carnosaur, which is an incredible value card that not only can stabilize and take over the game when you cast it, you can also use it as a removal spell earlier in the game if you need to. And finally, Tranquil Frillback which can be a creature that you pay up to six mana for, and when you do, you get a bunch of value. Destroying an artifact or enchantment, exiling a graveyard, or gaining four life are all things that are incredibly useful against the current metagame. And we have an incredibly powerful one mana removal spell in Triumphant Chomp. One mana, two damage to a creature is fine as a base, and then later in the game when we have dinosaurs, this might deal five even 7 damage. In the mana base, in addition to a bunch of dual lands, we've got the new creature land Restless Ridgeline, which is incredibly valuable to help us recover after Wraths, which is the biggest weakness of this deck. And Cavern of Souls, which gives us both whatever color of mana we need to cast as Dinosaur, as well as preventing our dinosaurs from being counterable. We'll save the win rate for the end, but this deck has been incredibly successful against a wide variety of decks. I hope you enjoy the gameplay. We'll be back at the end to wrap up. Well, we have lots of ramp, that's for sure. We'll want to draw some things to use our mana with. I mean, this we can cast for six mana and do a bunch of things depending on what goes on. Is there any benefit in just running it out right now? I don't think so. Okay, so this is control as opposed to Legends or mid range. So that's just okay. Well, we can take care of that. That's nice. So, since we don't have anything to do, I guess we just do all of it. Definitely should have used Cavern of Souls to cast it.
Now, if they have a wrath next turn, we're pretty much screwed. It looks like they don't have the mana for it. Okay. As much as I want to play the Dracosaur, I feel like we can't. If they want to trade with the Lord Keeper, that's fine. That gets us four more damage. Really? Okay. That's a little strange, because why would you do that if you had a Wrath? Huh. They could be trying to trick us into playing the Dracosaur, but not playing a second White Source and then go for the Throating a 2 2. They're. Okay. They didn't want to pay the Ward 2 on the Raptor, so they. They probably have a counter spell. That's what it is. Okay, that's fine. We'll just end the turn then. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's no problem. I think I go ahead and do the Dracosaur now. Mm. They can still counter it if they have Make Disappear. I guess we can play around that by playing the Besage you. Oh, no, I had to tap the Lore Keeper. Now they can do it. Okay. That's a good sign. Let's hope they're out of gas and we can take over with the Dragosaur. Oh, okay. Crucially important to note, I guess, uh, you only get one token of each type if both cards you exile are the same type. I'm not overconfident. You're just underwhelming. You're done. Well, if they had a removal spell they would certainly have cast it on the Dragosaur. But I guess we can start with the Carnosaur and see what we discover in two, because that might take care of the Emperor. All right. So if you notice what happened there, we uh, discovered into an Iskinth, and that was going to be exact lethal with the Lore Keeper and the Dracosaur, since the Iskinth has haste. Well, we're definitely keeping this. The question is, what are we going to name with Cavern? I assume just Dinosaur still, but let's kick that can down the road a little bit.
Okay, so this is mid-range and not ramp, or not aggro. Crucially, this hammer skull is going to be tapped unless we draw another dinosaur. So if these survive next turn, we can Carnosaur, although if they then have a Wrath, that might not even be that great for us. Announcement, okay. That's no problem. Carnosaur is Trample. Ooh. I'd love to besage you the wedding announcement, but I think we need to just get the Carnosaur going. Let's hope they don't have a wrath. Oh. Okay, well, we're going to get a ton of value off the Drachosaur. No reason to play the Copper Line Gorge. I guess we just Inskinth so we can attack with everything. Or roughly everything. Oh, haha. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that's a huge mistake. Wow. I mean, it doesn't matter that much now, but... Yeah, that's rough. All right, that makes it look like they have a wrath, which is unfortunate. We're going to set a stop in their second main phase so we can get rid of their announcement before it goes off. I mean, I guess they had to block that way to survive, basically. Hmm, do we want to get the... Okay. I was going to say, do we want to get the Mirex or the wedding announcement? But they made the decision for us. There are a lot of tap lands. It is unfortunate. So we'll be able to play the Hammer Skull on turn three. Um, but unfortunate that we can't play it on turn two. That would be awesome. Do we want to play both of our lore keepers or play Ridgeline lore keeper? I think just both lore keepers. If we draw another copper line gorge, we're going to be mad we didn't play it this turn. Okay. Okie dokie. Well, here I think we definitely play the Hammer Skull and the Ridge Line. Weird that they didn't play anything and didn't have a removal spell. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, 
oh, we can actually just take care of this with the frill back. That's cool. Sounds good, I think. So, let's go ahead and just kill this now. Oh, we, we're only gonna have four total mana anyway, so destroying that's the only thing we're gonna do. I was gonna say we, um, oh. Shit. <sighs> this is gonna get a stun counter now. Something we're going to have to get used to. <laughs> I was going to say, I was the point of waiting was, or the point of considering waiting, was it so we could exile a veteran if it chomped, but that's not happening. That's not happening. So we have a... Tap Hammer School next turn for no good reason. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not too upset about that. We're going to get a lot of value from those tokens. Target dinosaur you control. Okay, so it can be itself. Do we want to tap the lore keeper so we can double explore? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. We will take that for sure. We could explore right now just to put explore again, just to put another counter on it, but I think we want to save it to get the value. So let's explore before we attack. Okay. That could come in handy for their creature land. Attack only with its skinth. Oh, okay. No big deal. That should be it. I don't see any series of draws they could have that could compete with Dracosaur's value from here. Nice. Wow. Okay. Well, we're definitely playing Carnosaur. That's going to happen. And so we're not going to have enough mana for the Hammer Skull. All right, well, that's fine. Sure. I don't think we chomp the Luminous Phantom just so we can get through an attack. There's a good chance they play Wraths in this deck, um, but I wouldn't expect there to be a ton. This appears to be mostly black-white tokens. Okie dokie. 
All right. So. Um, let's definitely chomp this thing. They don't have enough mana for that. I think I'm totally fine to trade off my lore keepers. All right, it's a little slow, but it's certainly a keepable hand. We'll hope to draw a three or four drop. I've been seeing a lot of Lunark Veteran out there. I mean, I know Mono White Aggro has the highest win rate in standard right now, at least in best of one. Well, this is cool. All right, well, we'll be able to do some big stuff next turn. Hmm. That is shocking to me. I can't imagine why you would want to do that. Wow. I mean, okay, so next turn we've got six mana, even if we lose one of our creatures. I think I feel pretty good about double blocking this initiate. Wow, Chomp is good too. All right, well, let's discover. I'll take a yearling. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Well, this is going to be the battle to go wide. We've got these chomps. We can kill two of their creatures at some point. They're not going to be able to attack with that Vindicator. Ever. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Okay, well. Let's make this a green. Cast our hammer skull. We reduce their clock by one by killing their adversary that is pumped. And then... I mean, we could get crazy and just attack all. We've got a 6-6 six -six hanging back. Oh, is this a treasure? Okay, so we can play another 6-6. Six -six. Yeah. Totally fine with that trade. If the Phyrexian Vindicator had lifelink, we'd be in a lot of trouble here, but... I think we're going to be able to race pretty well. And, you know, what are they going to do? Um, at this point, even if they hold back, we'll be able to overwhelm them through the Vindicator. The Vindicator makes a lot of sense, though, by the way, in a meta with a ton of mono red and dinosaurs.
Okay, they don't have any enchantments. Alright. Oh, we can keep casting stuff from our graveyard. I totally forgot about that, too. That's awesome. If we chomp the adversary, attack all, they can chump the two hammer skulls, block the Dracosaur with the Vindicator. Yeah, so that's not going to be enough. Okay. Well, we only have this turn to play that. Let's play this. Let's... We can just gain four life. I don't think we need anything else. We don't need to exile this graveyard, I don't think. You can really see how that one attack with the Vindicator with the Vindicator messed them up really bad. So this time Chomp the adversary block 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 two more blockers Let's see so they have one two three four five total one two three four five that's more than enough okay Oh, it has first strike, so they get to kill one of our creatures. Oh, no. <laughs> totally forgot about that. I, I don't... <sighs> I don't know if that's going to be enough to matter. I don't think it is. Because we're still getting seven through with the Carnosaur. They're going to kill the Hulking Raptor. Yeah. Whew. And we're back to wrap up. You really got to see how well-rounded this deck actually is. I have played this deck exclusively in top 1% Mythic when I've been 99% or above in Mythic, and I have a record of 8 and 1. Obviously, that is not a huge sample size, but a nearly 90% win rate is worth noting, even at a small sample size. This deck seems to have just the right combination of power, speed, and value to be competitive against all aspects of the metagame. As far as changes go, there's nothing that I don't want. I just want more of everything, and so I don't know that I would actually change anything in the deck. The number one card that I'm finding that I want more of is Trumpeting Carnosaur. But at six mana, I'm not sure you want to cut smaller dinosaurs to put more of these in there. Now, you can pay three mana to use it as a removal spell, that's not an efficient removal spell, but it, it certainly alleviates the problem of it being six mana. The real problem is there's nothing to cut. Are we going to cut the ramp that gets us to six mana? I don't think we want to do that. I don't think we want to cut Dracosaurs. That is probably the individually most important card to the success of this deck because it allows us to take over the game with one card. 
We already have only three of the Frill back and Enskenth, despite them both being very useful against a lot of decks. And so I think I would mostly leave it as it is. You will notice with the mana base that you have some tap lands in the beginning of the game more often than you want to. That's definitely unfortunate, but I'm not sure that there's a good solution to that problem that won't be problematic in other ways. You can play more basics, but then you're going to have access to your colors less often when you need them. You could play more tribal lands like Cavern of Souls, but then you might have some problems with your mana creatures or with casting Triumphant Chomp. I'm not confident that this is the exact perfect configuration by any means, but based on the games that I've played, I can't think of any changes to the deck that would clearly make it better. You could certainly try a wide variety of options. There are incredibly good dinosaur cards in standard right now that I did not find room for in this deck. So you can definitely mix things up to suit your own tastes. I have found this specific build to be great for me. Let me know in the comments what cards you like playing most in your dinosaur decks, and I'll see you in the next one.